The Surface Paradise track is the fastest the riders will face in the three round series. The lap record average speed here is 155 kilometres an hour and riders yesterday were going substantially faster. The track is an intriguing mixture of tight S bends, long open corners and a very long straight with a highly abrasive surface which is extremely hard on tyres and could well wear down the tyres of the leading competitors in only 15 laps of the two heats of the Swan Insurance Series today. And then there's this corner, Dunlop Bridge, the fastest corner on Australian motorsport. Cars drift under here at 230 kilometres an hour and the bikes go only slightly slower. It's been the scene of some horrendous crashes in its time, but it's also been a great character builder for both drivers and riders, because you have to overcome your bravery and you have to commit yourself flat to get through here fast and give yourself a good run at the back of the circuit. You're on Wayne Gardner's bike as he pulls up onto pole position beside Kevin McGee on the front row. Robbie Phyllis slots in beside McGee, then it's McElnay, then it's Malcolm Campbell, Robert Holden is over next to Michael Dowson and Dave Peterson. Ready for a start, Phyllis is on the Galena Suzuki. He won the ride on Thursday, crashed it yesterday, but has come back brilliantly this morning in an early practice session. And it's a great start from Phyllis, but he is absolutely blasted by Michael Dowson, who heads the 750 with mono wheels all the way into the lead, followed by Rob McElnay. Gardner in third position. Big Yamaha. Robert Holden on the four-stroke in fourth position. And behind Gardner is Malcolm Campbell, as you can see. There he is, Gardner. Malcolm Campbell on three, he's just behind him. And Campbell will be dis a bit disappointed at his start. That's McElnay attacking Michael Dowson up front. On the left was McElnay. 15 laps of the 3.2 kilometer circuit to go. McElnay challenging Dowson. Down the inside, breaking duel. Lighter Suzuki. But Dowson holds it. Drift Running really wide, wide. Dowson very wide on the Yamaha. Just break too late. And that let McElnay through into the lead. But he's still in front of Gardner and Campbell. And McElnay will try and make a break for it now. No, oh, and a slide from McElnay. The tyre's not yet up to their full working temperature. And a bump that of quite a number of them around the circuit is Dowson now being attacked by Gardner. And Gardner Tires onto the straight they come. Gardner alongside Dowson, pulls in front of him, takes over second position. Those five bikes are spread by 1.4 seconds. Oh, look at McElnay's bike running out, sliding away as Campbell tries to go underneath. Dowson, Dowson who's back it. to third. Can't do it though. He yes, does. he does. Campbell's third, Dowson's fourth. He led half a lap ago. It's Rob McElnay in the lead. Standing lap of 18.58 seconds, 146 and a half kilometres an hour. This man flying. The V4, Rothmans Honda of Wayne Gardner. Behind him, the V3, locally prepared Honda of Mal Campbell. And Campbell is closing. Gardner, in turn, seems to be closing on McElnay. McElnay using absolutely every inch of the track there as we watch Gardner pulling away a little bit from Campbell. But it'd be interesting to see whether Gardner runs wide as he did earlier on. He probably won't make the same mistake again. A 13.78 second lap. Oh, and look at Gardner's bike sliding around at enormous speed. 1.07 seconds cover the first three. 0.85 of a second covers first back to second position. And behind this lot is Michael Dowson fourth, Kevin McGee fifth. Mike, uh, Dave Peterson, 6th, Robert Holden and Jeff Sale. McElnay, Gardner, Campbell. The Surface Paradise track, very abrasive on tyres. It could be a telling point as the race enters its closing stages. Just beautiful balance and rhythm and... Glorious. So pretty, these three riders but operating so close to the limits of adhesion as Gardner's bike bucks there. And we get on the back seat with him. And now he's going to be closing right in on McElnay. McElnay has a look behind him, sees that Gardner's right there. Look at the speed of the V4 Honda as it picks up the slipstream of the Suzuki and just flashes past. 
And now down to McElnay to see if he can do anything about it to try and repass Gardner at the end of the straight. Gardner sliding wildly, the back end at least two feet out of line, and Campbell now pressured McElnay. Indeed, he has to. This is a pressure moment for Mal Campbell because he doesn't want McElnay there. If he's to do anything about Gardner there fighting his own problems, then obviously Mal Campbell has to get up into second place and try and grunt the bike faster out of the corners than the rather more peaky powered Honda V4. Same motor in this bike all through the series. It's done about 750 kilometers. The second motor hasn't been out of the crate. The crankshaft indeed on that bike, to enormous credit, good for about 2,000 race miles. But at the end of each race, down they pull the top end and uh, new piston rings. And McElnay right up behind Gardner now. He knows that if he's going to stand any chance of staying with the Australian, he's got to be right overtaking him as they come onto the straight because the V4 will squirt away and Campbell trying to do the same thing, trying to pick up a toe from McElnay. Campbell looking for a way past, picks up the toe, breaks past McElnay into second place. It's half a second, cover the three of them. And, and look at uh, Gardner's bike sliding, my goodness gracious me. And, and the incredible abru oh. abuse being given to the rear tyre there as Gardner slides the bike, the rear wheel spinning, and the tough surface paradise track will be just shredding the rear rubber off the off the Dunlop tyre. Still Gardner leading the trail. Sliding again, sliding all the while, a new black line every time round the fast right-hander. As he said, it's not the fastest way through. It's sliding, it's also wheel spinning, and there it goes again as he opens the tap, and 145 horsepower come cracking on. Gardner just showing that he can do anything he likes with this machine, and Campbell has opened up a bit of a lead in second place over McElnay, and both of them have lost out a little to Gardner. Rossman's Honda in the lead, the factory race bike from Japan. In second place, Honda Australia. Malcolm Campbell, who hasn't ridden the bike until two weekends ago, since a year earlier at this race meeting at Surfers Paradise. And then Rob McElnay having his last ride on the Skull Bandit Suzuki. Campbell once more up again behind Gardner. Is he going to look to pass him going onto the straight? Incidentally, of course. Rob McElnay's place in the Skull Bandit team to be taken by another Australian we hear, Paul Lewis, going into that team next year as their Grand Prix rider. Coming around to complete lap 13 to start the final two. Now, has Campbell got anything up his sleeve? It's doubtful, but as we've seen previously in this series, he won't give up right until the last minute, and Gardner carries on sliding the big four. And in fact, I don't think anybody's got much left, but... Wayne Gardner's probably got a bit of power to call on when necessary. The two behind, I think, have produced about all their aces and most of their other trump cards. Gardner settling in very much to within about a tenth of a second to one minute, 13 and a half second lap times, averaging about 156, 157 kilometers an hour. But Campbell closes in once more on G, Wayne Gardner. I was Number going to three. say, he's got not much more. He hasn't in the bike, but he has in his determination. It's, and he hasn't wanted over these last few laps to alert Gardner to uh, what he wants to pull, is going to try and pull, if he can, if he's in position and close enough on the last lap. It's coming up now. There's one corner now before they start the final. And rocketing onto the main straight comes Malcolm Campbell, trying to get close enough to get a slipstream from the fastest bike in the race, the fastest bike in Grand Prix racing. He's not really close enough to get much out of it. And in fact, Rob McElnay's locked up, I'd say, and he's trailed back and will not finish the heat. So Rob McElnay, second place in the series, 11 points down to Gardner as they lap Jeffrey Sale, who's in eighth place. And that won't done of Campbell any good at all because he's had to take a tight line into the corner. He's slower there and can't get the power on as early as he'd like as Gardner accelerates away down the back straight. 13.37, last lap for Gardner. It's desperation straights for Campbell now if he's going to do anything about it. So we watch McElnay cruising around. He's out of the race. The motor has died. Gardner on his last lap. Braking. Back end just hopping in the air. And see how far Campbell is behind. He's close. He knows that he's only got about three corners to pass the V4. You have to be in front of him on going onto the straight or never pass him in a drag to the line. Can he do it? Closing all the time on the V4. Two corners left. This is 
the second to last one closing again he's got to do it now if he's going to make any attempt he's not going to be able to do it tries to get the power on early on the three cylinder but the four surely has the answer Garner takes a look behind sees where Campbell is and accelerates across the line to win and it was about a tenth of a second difference only between Wayne Gardner first in the first heat of round three of the Swan Insurance International Series from Malcolm Campbell second on the Honda Australia machine the third bike is yet to finish unbelievable they are that far back in the absence of Rob McElnay very bad luck for him stopping at the end of lap 14 the start of lap 15 and this is the uh, third place battle and it's Peterson who leads McGee Peterson on the HB Suzuki has got past the 750 Yamaha and trying to stop McGee passing on the run into the line when he does it but I think the 500 just held out the 750 in the run-in for the line and that would make Peterson third in front of McGee. Wayne Gardner by one second from Malcolm Campbell and 35 seconds in arrears on the Suzuki, Dave Peterson. Wayne Gardner, terrific stuff, but wasn't Malcolm Campbell pushing it? He was going very good and riding very well. I mean, uh, Malcolm rode superbly, I think. Uh, I actually had a bit of a new run off at the top of the circuit up there in the top end and I thought, well, I'm not concentrating, I better get my act together and uh, then my Rotham's Honda sort of got it going and I felt better and away we went and, and uh, so it was good. You've got a rear tyre that's probably seen better days, I'd suggest. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the problem. I mean, it's nice to have all this horsepower and uh, lots of it, but it's actually harder, harder on the tyres and uh, harder to ride. So basically you can actually use a bit less horsepower and uh, get away with it and probably ride just as hard and just as fast. One of the personal challenges you'd set yourself this weekend was to try and test yourself against Freddie Spencer's tyre yeah. testing <laughs> uh, laps up here. How do you feel now? Well, I did a 12-3 in qualifying and uh, I was pretty pleased that I felt as though I could do a high 11 if I'd really pushed things to the limit. But I've got a lot of things to look forward to next year and if I went and did that and fell off, I mean, I'd be uh, make a right idiot of myself. So I basically took it easy and uh, I think I've gone close enough to satisfy myself and also satisfy the Dunlop technicians. Well the last heat coming up this afternoon Malcolm Campbell just said to me wait for that. <laughs> well you know we'll have to see him wait. And see. I mean he might do it who knows I hope it's a good race uh, good for the spectators but uh, I've got a bit more up my sleeve yeah.